When I see those martial art movies, of course it's fun to watch. You see beautiful techniques, but it doesn't work that way. Set the arm, my side. Set the arm, look at that, look at that. That's it. With a ninth dan in judo and a tenth dan in karate, John Blooming has a fearsome reputation as a fighter, both in the dojo and on the street. He is well known for speaking his mind. Bruce Lee never fought the championship or never really fought a real fight. Uh, besides that, I don't think he is an example for uh, the youth of USA because he died of an overdose of drugs. Nobody wants to talk about it, but that's the damn truth. So he is no example. And if you see those guys like Siegel, it's beautiful movements. And uh, I not know personally uh, John claude Van Damme, but I know people who fought with him and who knew him. In the old days, he only weighed 47 kilo, and he never won anything, not even a B uh, States championship. So he is lying about world championships. As a matter of fact, that came to me recently that he uh, in a bar he found a biker and one way or the other the biker didn't like him and knocked him out in one punch. So, what are the good actors? I was always amazed when I saw a big pile of tiles and then they go with the head, boom, straight through 25. Jeez. As one of the most qualified karate men in the world, you'd think that John Blooming could do it, if anyone could. I put six or eight of those tiles in one piece or two stones. And I went, whack, I nearly broke my wrist. I went through them, but it bothered me for a week. And I figured 25 and with his head, impossible. It was during a training visit to Japan that he finally discovered the truth. I was walking around and I see a big stack of uh, uh, tiles ready to be broken and taken pictures of. So I walked to the task, picked up one. It was like I put a piece of paper. And I looked under it, and there was a big line carved baked in it. The whole tile in the middle was not more than maybe a millimeter. I don't think a millimeter. I think a half millimeter. So no wonder 25 tiles. If you lean on them, you go straight through them. And that's the typical Japanese rules you have to play. And uh, there were five pimps. And they boarded a friend of mine, and he wanted to know why. So we went over uh, to where the car were, and uh, that was by a garage. And out jumped five guys. And one picked up a hammer, and he hit me right on the inside of my left foot. That hurt. I was so mad. I just, like a tiger, I stormed forwards, and I caught him, cut away his hands, and one way or the other, I hit him. Don't ask me if I hit him with my fist. I think so. Or I might have had uh, with the triangle bone here and hit him because the ear came off. He had a, a, a crack in his skull and the main artery was busted. And he was dying from 10 o'clock in the morning until 3 o'clock at night. From that day on, I swore I will never in a street fight unless my life is in danger, hit him with my fist. And I developed the so-called Chotai, which is just if a as effective, but it doesn't really kill you. A little farther, boom. And then I can go in, boom. And then knock him out. <laughs> okay. John Blooming, known as the Beast of Amsterdam, has earned his nickname while providing security for the clubs and casinos of the Red Light District. <laughs> With a tenth dan in karate and a ninth dan in judo, he is a world-class martial artist. I always was interested in a kind of watertight system you can use on the streets in self-defense. Now, don't forget, in the old days, you didn't really need that much. And now, you can't, you can hardly do without it. But anyway, I was always thinking, if you are against a boxer, only with judo, you might get a punch more often than not, and you lose. Uh, if with your judo uh, you are against a wrestler, you still have a hard time beating the wrestler. You can show them, you can show them. Three, three, So I figured if you combine, for instance, karate, the kicks, the defenses, the punches, combine that with throwing techniques, backwards, frontwards, hip throws, and the next one third is once you have thrown him, don't let him go on the ground, jump him. 
any street fighter, once you have him on the ground, he is a baby. So from here, in, bang. And up. Come on now, it was not that bad. <laughs> and then you pull the other one over your wrist. See what I mean? At six foot four and 16 stone, you could argue that any system might work for Big John Blooming. But what about the rest of us? Dave most probably could not do the things I do. Why? Because I'm tall, I'm heavier than he is. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, yeah, uh, he couldn't do what Dave does or what I do because he is still lighter and not really weight trained and all that. So everybody has adapt to his own style and think about it and train in that way so that he won't be scared of a big guy. And that's why I felt, for instance, this real fast King Gary. Because when I stand here and have a fast King Gary, from nothing, I'm in his balls. But, you know, in a split second, but. So he couldn't see it, he can't see it in my eyes, what I'm gonna do, I just give him a deadly stare. And I hit him, but, right in the balls. And as soon as I hit his balls, it takes one or two seconds, and then he goes. <laughs> and as soon as I hit the balls, I will move right in with Shota. Pop! When, when this is his head, pop! My personal opinion is, it is not the mystic, uh, you know, all the, the, the funny things around it, which, which makes me very uh, jittery. No, it is a hard way of life. Be yourself. Try to improve yourself. Try to be honest against everybody. But once you get shafted by somebody, really whack him. Boom! And then knock him out. I don't want to offend anybody if they like that to do that uh, and they're happy, so what the hell is it? But uh, I always find the spiritual thing and, and, and the meditation and the Zen thing behind karate or fighting sports is usually one far less than mediocre teacher who fills his pocket with money and couldn't hit his grandmother if she had an umbrella in her hand. They're phonies, mostly. I myself, I like to be honest, I like to be a fighter. I never charge my boys money, really money, you know, just enough so I could run the dojo and then my car and things, you know, and I made my money, luckily, at the casinos. But the boys gave me a return, something which is far greater and far more value to me, like an Olympic championship, a world championship. Yeah. Chris Dorman, trained in Blooming System, has been winning medals for years in free fighting. A fighting sport where anything goes. Chris Dorman is the best all-round student I ever had. And he fought anybody who would like to fight with him. And he was a uh, free fight champion when he was 50 years of age in 93 in Japan. He beat everybody and not beat them. He beat the Russians. He beat them to a pulp. They crawled out of the ring. They were scared to death for him. He's terribly rough, but very honest. But rub him the wrong way. He will just tell you as a funny kind of look there like, uh, what was that? And you repeat it. You have it right there. Whack! He knocks you out. He doesn't take bullshit from anybody. The way of the warrior for John Blooming is markedly different to most people we filmed. But then he is one of the few martial artists to have experienced the horrors of war firsthand. Blooming is a decorated veteran of the Korean War, where he served with the Dutch Royal Marines. I have to admit that formed my life and it uh, gave me a stamina and it gave me a background and I knew that I could stand on my own two feet. And when in Hong Song we had this big ambush and I saw in the night and I saw left and right my comrades die with bayonets up and all that, I never forget the lieutenant saying, uh, boys, this is it, get your bayonets up. And I figured, oh, Jesus, now what? But 
When we finally got out, I swore that this is the end. Never, ever would anybody touch my family or me or my friends, at least not unpunished.